Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another question and narrative video and today's topic is simply called, well, this is awkward. The reason that I'm doing this video is because maybe last week I received uh, an email from a viewer who sent it to me after watching my preterism video. And in the comments of that preterism video were many, many, many people saying that preterism was invented by the Jesuits. And if you're not sure why that would matter, um, just, just suffice it to say that the Jesuits are a very nefarious sect within the Catholic Church that not many people trust. And that's as far as I'm going to get into that today. But yeah, so that's something that I think that a few other channels have pointed out that preterism was created by the Jesuits. And so unfortunately there was an attack on preterists without actually looking at why they believe what they believe and without actually looking at the verses that they use to support their beliefs. And unfortunately it was a very unchristian like view of the whole thing. And I was really disappointed in a lot of people, but now there's a surprise that has come up because the person who sent me the email, who is named Robert, sent me some very interesting information. And that is that futurism was also created by the Jesuits, at least according to what many different websites and many different documents say. So let's take a look at this. And this is on the lutheranlibrary.org. And I will show you there are some other websites that I found this on. And it, it also does say it on Wikipedia that futurism was also another Jesuit invention. But I found that it was more important to look at other websites. But let me just read to you what this says. Today, many Protestants have departed from the Christian interpretation of the prophecies in the book of Revelation and many other passages in the word of God. Church history has not left us in ignorance concerning the false dispensational interpretation of the book of Revelation. Preterists declared that the Antichrist power of scriptures had already come and gone, being fulfilled in the Roman emperors Vesperian and, I think, isn't that supposed to be Vespasian? I don't know. And Titus, which I don't believe is correct. At least all the preterist material that I've read says Nero, but I could be wrong who had attacked the Jews, ransacked Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and slaughtered over 1 million people in the year 70 AD. The other school, known as the Futurists, said that this great power must be future, teaching that it would not appear until the second advent of Jesus Christ. The originator of this second erroneous thesis was a Spanish Jesuit priest, Francisco Ribera. As he attempted to advance the Roman Catholic Counter-Reformation, Ribera was embarrassed by the persistent Protestant identification of the papacy with the Antichrist. To counter this, he revived a futuristic interpretation for the book of Revelation. He placed all but the first three chapters in the future. Antichrist was restored to a person and an individual ruler, not the Pope, who would arise in the future. Antichrist would reign for three and one half years, and his teaching was embellished with a rebuilding of a temple at Jerusalem, revival of the Levitical laws and sacrifices, plus various Jewish aspects in addition to the wholly unfulfilled persecution of the church. This futuristic interpretation was popularized by Cardinal Bellarmine and became widely accepted within Romanism. So yes. You can say that preterism was created by the Jesuits, but then you also have to admit that futurism was also created by the Jesuits. Here we have another one on the Gospel Herald, a history of the foundation of futurism and preterism. I scrolled down a bit, but I'm just going to start reading here. And I want to say before I read this, that today's video is not to push forth any one view. Today's video is just about pointing out that if you say that one thing was created by a certain group, 
And then you have at least some accounts, historical accounts, that the opposite group was also created by the same group you have to admit that it went on both sides. And this is something that we see in politics nowadays. There are two sides of the same coin. And yeah, it was happening then too. So I'm not going to jump forth and say that any one of these particular things that I'm talking about today is correct. I'm going to show you that there is a lot of hypocrisy involved when it comes to, quote, exposing viewpoints that you don't agree with. So let's just start reading here. Two conflicting alternatives brought forth. Rome's answer to the Protestant Reformation was twofold, though actually conflicting and contradictory. Through the Jesuits, Ribera of Salamanca, Spain, and Bellarmine of Rome, the papacy put forth her futurist interpretation. Almost si simultaneously, Alcazar, Spanish Jesuit of Seville, advanced the conflicting preterist interpretation. These were designed to meet and overwhelm the historical interpretation of the Protestants. Though mutually exclusive, either Jesuit alternative suited the great objective equally well, as both thrust aside the application of the prophecies from the existing Church of Rome. The one, preterism, accomplished it by making prophecy stop altogether short of papal Rome's career. The other, futurism, achieved it by making it overleap the immense era of papal dominance, crowding Antichrist into a small fragment of time in the still distant future, just before the great consummation. It is consequently often called the gap theory. Not the gap theory that I usually talk about. According to the Protestants, the vision of Babylon and the supporting beast is divinely interpreted in chapter 17 of the Apocalypse. It was on this that the reformers commonly rested their case. The apostate woman, the Roman church, the city, seven-hilled Rome, the many waters, the many peoples, the beast, the fourth or Roman beast of Daniel, the sixth head, the Caesars, and the seventh, the popes. Roman Catholics as well as Protestants agree as to the origin of these interpretations. The Roman Catholic writer G.S. Hitchcock says, The futurist school founded by the Jesuit Ribera in 1591 looks for Antichrist Babylon and a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem at the end of the Christian dispensation. The preterist school founded by the Jesuit Alcazar in 1614 explains the revelation by the fall of Jerusalem, or by the fall of pagan Rome. Similarly, Dean Henry Alford, Protestant, in the Prolego Mena to his Greek Testament declares, the founder of this system, futurist in modern times, appears to have been the Jesuit Ribera, about A.D. 1580. The preterist view found no favor and was hardly so much as thought of in the times of primitive Christianity. The view is said to have been first promulgated in anything like completeness by the Jesuit Alcazar in 1614. So hopefully that gives you a good summary of what they are saying about the creation of these two, what we'll call camps of Christianity. Now, another thing that Robert pointed out in the email is that many people today who um, staunchly believe in the, the little season may not actually be preterists at all, but are historicists. And historicism was a little confusing to me. So I, I had to look it up on a few different websites for it to be adequately explained to me because just like with preterism and actually with many forms of, of Christianity, a, different historicists have different views on how things turn out. So I decided to go to this website here and this one is on historicist.info, historicism, futurism, preterism, okay? So let's just read a little bit about what historicism is because I find this to be very important because the ones who are saying that preterism and futurism were created by the Jesuits, they were historicists. So... I'm not saying that futurism or preterism was actually invented by the Jesuits at all. What I'm saying, though, is that what, what you have, like I mentioned before with politics, you kind of have this mudslinging campaign where people are trying to, you know, knock one another down 
and are trying to get people to not trust them. And, you know, we see this happening with biblical cosmology. You know, they come out saying, oh, well, the the earth, the, the flat earth is a CIA psyop and it's a new invention. But then they're completely ignoring the ancient cosmological beliefs of civilizations worldwide, completely ignoring those. And people actually believe that it's a CIA psyop. And, you know, the same thing even goes on with what we'll call the jabs <laughs> that, you know, they'll say something like, oh, well, that was all started by Jenny. And I'm sure you know what her last name is. I'm not going to say it. And so they try to delegitimize anything that has to do with that by saying that because, oh, she's just some dumb actress. She doesn't know what she's talking about. So um, I'm not, again, I'm not going to say whether it is actually true that the Jesuits created either of these. I'm just going to say that this is something that does happen. And unfortunately, it even happens in Christianity. But let's just read what historicism is. The historicist school of prophetic interpretation results in a progressive and continuous fulfillment of prophecy. This continuous fulfillment starts in Daniel's time, circa 600 BC, continues through John the Revelator's time, circa 100 AD, on to the second coming of Jesus. This school of prophetic interpretation is not novel or new. Now, I will say that I looked up historicism and it does say that historicism was, I think they said revised in the year 500 AD. Could be wrong. Let me go and check that now. Okay, so it actually says that one of the earliest historicist commentators was 300 AD. But again, you know, we, we don't really know what's true on, well, not, I was going to say on the internet, but pretty much anywhere, because if we think that history being changed is just a recent thing, well, that's not true. I believe that history has been changed throughout all of history, because there are things that people who like to consider themselves the controllers like to hide from us. But if we are to believe what it says in 300 AD, okay. So let's continue. And I'm going to say that historicism it does is, is very interesting, this, this point of view. This school, oh, I already said that. Biblical scholars throughout the centuries, actually from 2 BC to the present, have ascribed to it. Daniel, John the Revelator, Hippolytus, Joachim, Wycliffe, Luther, Knox, Newton, and Wesley are examples of the prominent people who believed in and used historicist method of prophetic interpretation. I'm going to also say, venture to say the Catholic Church, too. I'm not sure, but I, it sure seems that way, at least according to how the others were created. Um, let's see. We'll go down here. The historicist declares that the prophecies of Daniel portray an outline of human and ecclesiastical history and the story of the struggle between good and evil down to the end of time. While BBSB adds that the book of Revelation also presents in symbols the entire course of history of the church from the close of the first century to the end of time. This manner of prophetic interpretation, as I stated above, was used from approximately 2 BC to the present, yet you very seldom hear of the historicist view of prophetic interpretation. What you mostly hear about is futurism or preterism. And then it says, how did they evolve? And then it just gives you the same stories of how they were created down here. Now, one thing that I will say is that, again, historicism does seem very interesting to me. The one thing about historicism, I know I said that I wasn't going to push one view, but I'm, I'm not pushing a view. I'm just giving sharing an observation is that when it comes to preterism, they make a very, very, very good case for the imminence of prophecy being fulfilled. I mean, just verse after verse after verse after verse saying the time is at hand, the time is about to come, the time is near. Um, there are Old Testament passages where God is saying that he will not, you know, these prophecies are not going to happen far, far away. They're, they're going to happen in, in, a, in a quick amount of time. And that's the, that's the one issue that I would have with historicism, because yes, if I would not know about all of those verses about imminence in the Bible, I would look at historicism and I would say, yeah, that's actually really, really a possibility 
especially when it comes to the short season, that that would all seem to make sense because it would just be more progression of revelation as time goes on. I just can't reconcile that. Yeah, the, the, the Bible, it seems very, very clear that the, the prophecies and revelation are going to all happen or did happen very quickly and that they were specifically speaking to the people at the time that it was written. So that's just what I got out of it. But anyway, that's all that I really had for you today. I just wanted to share this with you because there, again, there's so much mudslinging that goes around. Well, this, this sect was created by this and this group was created by this person. And you know what? First of all, those of us in the truth or movement know that you cannot trust a lot of what you read. So we need to take a step back and remember that Christ wanted us to be unified not divided. And so going around pointing the finger saying, oh, well, that was a Jesuit creation. That was a Jesuit creation. Well, you know what? Guess what? Both sides are supposedly Jesuit creations. Do I believe they were both Jesuit cre creations? Not necessarily. I know how things work, but I wanted to point out to you that these things happen, not just in politics, but unfortunately also in the church. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. And if you, um, actually I forgot to say that Bruce Gore does an excellent overview of the book of Revelation. And he comes more from, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it will be called historicist or preterist point of view, but he does do an excellent job. I do not 100% agree on all of his interpretations, but I, yeah, I'm not, I, I very well could be wrong. I probably am. But anyway, I, I very seldom find anyone that I 100% agree with. So I just, I'm just going to throw that out there, but I'm going to say it again. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my YouTube membership page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well, or you can just click on it. And I hope you have a great day.